All right, Off Grid Stores here back with another video. In this video, I'm going to run a 1500 watt space heater with the EcoFlow Delta Pro at 100% charge and see how long the Delta Pro can power this for. The reason being is a lot of people ask me, can I run space heaters? Can I run air conditioners off of the Delta Pro? Any, any solar generator out there. And the one thing I say is, Space heaters, air conditioners, things like that, electric cooks, tops, and things take a lot of power. 1,500 watts is a lot. This is 3,600 watt hour total battery capacity. It's at 100% charge or as close to it as possibly can for this video. And how long can it run it for? So we're going to show in this video. So if you want to see more videos like this, please be sure to subscribe uh, and hit the bell notification to be notified anytime we post one like this. Also, be sure to like this video. Helps get it out into the algorithm so more people can see the power of these units, how to set up solar and everything like that. Basically what I did was I charged it up 100%. I turned it so that the screen would turn off, I believe within one minute. I turned the screen brightness down really low. I don't have any of the inverters on right now. It's not on. Nothing can be powered from this at the moment, but it is on standby. It's been on standby for like one minute. So basically what I'm going to do is turn on this Atomi Smart Space Heater. I like this because I can turn it on from my bed or from wherever I am. I can turn it off from whenever I am. I can set uh, schedules with it. It's worked decent so far. I've only had it for about one to two months though. Um, no links for this, but links in the bio for the EcoFlow Delta Pro. If you're interested, reach out to us. Also, if you're a first time customer, you can get 10% off your order with the code 10% now, and we'll have that down in the description as well. All links in the description. So pretty much all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it on and then I'm going to turn on a stopwatch and then pretty much come in and see how long it lasted and try to catch it when it hits zero. So for the sake of this video, let's hope it works well. So pretty much what I'm gonna do, let's turn on the screen. We got the screen on, it says it'll last seven days. It's connected to my phone, connected to everything. All we need to do is turn on the actual inverter and then here we are. This is already plugged in and ready to go. So that's that. I forgot to press start, so we just click start. Let me pause. So here we are running it. Um, we'll just add an extra minute. I'm already almost messing up this this uh, test and theory that we have here. So just add an extra minute to it and we'll call it good. So getting back to where I was at. So a little bit of background before I kind of leave it like this is why am I doing this? One of the main reasons is because this is pretty much not a 100% off grid shed that I do my work in. And one of the big issues with it is that we were running power to it and in a pretty janky way, which I don't want to show the setup. And pretty much what happened was it burnt out and now I can't run the space heater from it. So I figured I'd make this video just to kind of show that the space heater is on 100%. It's supposed to charge up to, I mean, this space heater is supposed to get up to 86 degrees. Um, and again, one of the big things here that you want to note is if you can heat things in a different way like basically if you have another means of cooling down your house or heating up your house or your off-grid setup or whatever it is then you are going to want to use that other means these you're going to need a massive battery bank in order to run space heaters it's not efficient and i'm just going to show you that this three thousand plus dollar unit although great for powering a bunch of stuff is not going to be too great for powering a space heater so Basically, all I'm gonna do is let this run. I'll have probably a one hour checkup and then we'll check back in at the end. So I'll see you then. And before we do the one hour checkup, just showing that it is around 1500 watts, more or less a little bit under it. When it first kicked on, it was actually a little bit higher. It's like 1560. It says it'll run it for two, one hour. It should say two, but We'll see. Usually, you know, the math isn't always 100% there. So, yep, I'll check back in at an hour. All right, so we're back at the one hour mark, as I said I would. And let's see what we have here. So, the temperature has raised a good amount. I forget what it was beforehand, but it says it's 61 now, 62, teetering around there. Um, and one thing to note is this shed is not very well insulated so that could play a good role the walls are insulated but the ceiling is not so you know again are you going to be running it at full blast for as over an hour two hours you might but again you know it all comes into play with 
your situation. So right now it says that we're at 38%. So we have run it down a good amount in one hour. It's not gonna even make two hours, which if this was fully charged, which it was, 3,600 watt hours. But you have to realize, I'm sure you can hear the fans. I gotta get my mic close to it. The fans are quite loud. It has to power the inverter. It's not 100% efficiency. You're not gonna get 3,600 straight to this. It needs to work, obviously the inverter. And again, the fans are going quite well at the moment. So, <clears throat> you know, it is, it's, it's gonna take power. Uh, the fans have been on since pretty much the first minute. And, you know, it, it does eat up a good amount. If you're running something not as labor intensive, you know, you, you have a TV, a couple lights, and maybe your refrigerator. Refrigerators aren't on all the time, other things like that. This will last a long time. But if you're trying to go all out and space heat, I don't know how big this is. Uh, I think it's over 200 square feet. Yeah, it could take a while. Also, you know, powering the screen, although it's not a lot, it does pay, play into it. From what I've seen in the past, it will go, it will say 36 or however many minutes left and it will go longer than that. So that's why we're gonna sit around and we're gonna come to the conclusion here in the next half hour, 45 minutes or so. Just a quick update. I want to make see you know show you first off you don't need a 1500 watt space heater you could have a much less of a space heater they make like 800 watts 500 watts even small 400 watt ones you know outside temperature plays a big role what the temperature is outside it's decently cold out also how insulated it is these doors are not insulated as you know this is just a shed um and as you can see right here the ceiling is not insulated whatsoever so all this plays a role into how long are you going to be running this for how how long do you need it for and again, like I said, you always want to be making sure that if you can get your heating and your cooling sources from something else like propane, there's a propane heater over there. It's just not hooked up yet um, to propane. And yeah, so I'm going to come back in about 45 minutes or 40 minutes or so, and we'll do an update or the final update here. All right. So we're inching up on the end of this video. It's been running for about an hour and 40 minutes, you know, hour 36 right now, plus or minus. The one to two minutes that I forgot to actually press the starter on the timer. So now we'll come over to the unit. Sit down. Scroll out. Turn on the screen. It says two minutes. I guess we'll just wait. From what I've seen in the past, this should run past this two minute mark. So I'll keep the video rolling, but I will cut it out the extra waiting period because I don't want you to waste your time 65 degrees last time it was 62 and again ambient temperature outside insulation everything will play a role this might even get hot enough to start heating it a little bit but it's its own little space heater but it's actually rather cool where the fans are so now we just wait one percent one minute about an hour and 37 on the clock. So as we can see already, the one minute has lasted longer than one minute. It definitely isn't always the most accurate number. Again, it's kind of hard to have something be accurate down towards the end of a battery life. And this unit, I mean, there's a lot of technology going on in it already. So, I mean, it's better, I guess, that it lasts this long. It's kind of like a, a gas tank telling you that you're on empty, but you still have probably like one gallon left in order to make it to the gas station. I believe that's the same thing going on here with EcoFlow, Delta Pro, Delta Max does the same thing. They're not known for being the most efficient with their power. The Blue Eddies are a bit more efficient, but Again, they still do last. And obviously having the screen on does draw more power, but shouldn't be uh, the biggest difference in our calculation here. So I think it's been on one minute for almost two minutes now. I knew this was gonna happen. So we've been on one minute for about seven minutes now. I just made it so that the screen, I had it so the screen would time out at one minute 
I just changed it to five minutes so that I don't have to keep pressing a little button right there to turn it back on. But things like the little lantern in the Bible or whatever that lasts way too long or lasts a long time. That's what this is like. But again, also with these units, you're not supposed to run them down to literally zero power. It's not good for the batteries. It could cause long-term damage. I'm doing it just for this video. I highly suggest not doing this. It's definitely why they have it so that 1% lasts for a long time because it's probably not even at 1%. It's just a nice lie. But again, it's not good for the batteries to have them go down below like 20% for lithium iron phosphate. But for the sake of the video, I am gonna run it dry. Hopefully not cause too much damage. Uh, just don't do this very often. And another thing is that you can obviously keep this thing running for a lot longer. It can take up to 1600 watts of solar. I've never seen a solar panel array that can get to 1600 watts and fit within their criteria of the charge controllers, volt, max voltage and max amps that it can take. Seen a bunch of uh, figurations with 1200 watts. So, you know, if you're pumping 1200 watts in this thing, you're almost covering the, you know, it's been running at around 440, I mean 1440, pretty much the whole time once it's settled out. And um, you, know, you could pretty much be covering the entire power of this space heater with the solar going into the unit if this was running on solar as well. But again, I just wanted to show what if a 100% fully charged unit, how long it could run for. So it's been at one minute for about 10 minutes now, but I'm going to stop talking for now and come back hopefully once it's, once it's done. All right, so the unit was truly the little train that could. It went like 25-ish minutes at 1%. It lasted two hours and one minute two hours and two minutes plus or minus one extra minute where i forgot to press start on the stopwatch we we're about maybe two hours and five minutes around there let's let's round up if i didn't keep the screen on probably would have lasted two hours and five minutes so that's pretty good i mean again you're not going to be using this to heat a house you're not going to be using this to heat up anything of you know for a long time but again if you had solar going into it counterbalancing the amount of energy and power that this was drawing you could in fact heat something for a decent amount of time. Again, you don't wanna rely solely on this solar generator unit just for heat. It really should be for everything else. You should get heat from another source. But again, if you needed to run this, especially if it was a smaller space heater for a couple hours a night or something like that to keep it at a, you know, a livable temperature, a survival temperature, you could easily do this in an emergency situation. Again, it got up to like, I don't even know it was extreme it was like 68 degrees in here when it when it finally shut off so hopefully you enjoyed this video uh it took a while to make but i enjoyed making it if you want a link to the delta pro it will be down below in the description and in the pinned comment and again first time buyers get 10 percent off their first order from offgridstores.com be sure to like this video let's get it out to as many people as possible really help with the channel and the algorithm and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this the next one i'll do is probably running a refrigerator see how long that'll last thank you